While there are surely plenty of candid, heartwarming moments on the ever-popular Extreme Makeover Home Edition reboot, there's still plenty to know that isn't readily apparent just from watching the show. We're here to take a look at what the cameras aren't showing us. We know, we know, the emotions run heavy on this reality TV classic. But as anyone even remotely familiar with the genre knows, these programs are designed to peak and flow in exactly the way they do on camera. Still, the true test of any given reality show's authenticity is not how moving an episode is, but how long those emotions actually endure once the cameras switch off. According to Darren Keefe, one of the reboot's designers, when it comes to Extreme Makeover Home Edition, the gratitude for renovations is so authentic that audiences might even be missing some of it. To the Los Angeles Times, he described seeing a couple from the show whose home had just been renovated, quote, sitting on the front porch looking into each other's eyes. He went on to add, And it wasn't part of the television show, just these little moments that kind of sneak up on you. They didn't have to say anything. It was such a beautiful moment, this recognition that everything was going to be okay. When it came to happiness lasting long after the camera crew left, the original ABC version of Extreme Makeover Home Edition struggled. The problem became widely reported on. When families finally settled into living in their beautiful new homes, many couldn't afford to stay. Between higher taxes, utility bills, and upkeep, what started as a dream became a costly burden for people who were often already scrambling. Designer Carrie Lachlan addressed this problem directly when speaking to the Los Angeles Times. She explained that the reboot has taken a more proactive approach to ensure the new homes are helpful and not ultimately harmful to families. She said, We were very aware and took precaution in creating homes that they could stay in and grow in, and ones specific to their needs, so they didn't have that kind of shock value going into the house. She also noted that the show went even further to help families' financial situations by offering college scholarships and installing solar power technology. We don't know about you, but when we used to settle in to watch the original Extreme Makeover Home Edition, it was a full family show. Perhaps it was just the nature of it being on broadcast television on a Sunday night, but we would pile onto the couches all together with bowls of popcorn, ready to inevitably watch mom cry at the end. You just have no idea. The gift. Thank you. The audience for the reboot of Extreme Makeover Home Edition looks a little different. According to The Wrap, the premiere, which went live on HGTV on Sunday, February 16, 2020, raked in 4.2 million viewers, with three days of DVR catch-up included in that number. This put it well within the top five cable programs for that night and time slot. It was also within the top five for upscale or wealthy people and the 25 to 54-year-old demographic. As The Wrap went on to report, the series was particularly popular with upscale women between 25 and 52, ranking in the top three cable shows in its time slot. To us, this tracks with HGTV's typical audience. As any Extreme Makeover Home Edition fan knows, the show is formulaic, in the best way possible. When you turn on an episode, you can count on it following the same soothing narrative structure, from the family's video submission explaining why they need a home makeover, to the surprise construction crew drop-in, and all the way through renovations to the final catchphrase. What we don't see, though, is the nitty-gritty of the application process, the moment a person sits down at the computer with the intention of nominating themselves or another for an extreme home makeover. It turns out that process is less involved than we thought it might be. According to House Beautiful, hopeful simply submit a 50-question application, hand over the social media handles for everyone in the family, and upload one or two optional videos introducing the family and showing producers around their house. Applicants also have to know what makes their circumstances different from others, and list five major repairs their home desperately needs. Not so bad, considering considering the potential reward. When rumors started swirling about the potential comeback of Extreme Makeover Home Edition, many fans suspected its return might be synonymous with that of Ty Pennington's, who hosted the original nine seasons from 2003 through 2012. In a shock to everyone, including the new host himself, HGTV went a different route, approaching actor Jesse Tyler Ferguson to helm the ship instead. Ferguson was surprised by the offer. As he explained to Us Weekly, reality TV was a twist from his previous 11-year tenure on Modern Family. Despite the vast differences, though, Ferguson said committing to the show just made sense. A show like this has such an amazing human connection story. There's just so much negative news in our world, so I'm excited for people to see heartwarming stories and humans helping each other and being selfless. Viewers and Jesse Tyler Ferguson weren't the only ones surprised by HGTV's decision to switch up the Extreme Makeover Home Edition hosting gig. The news also came as a shock to former host and fan-favorite alumni Ty Pennington. He took to Instagram to explain his reaction in August 2020. At first, he referenced the COVID pandemic and then proceeded to preface his reaction with the understanding that he had only lost a job. Many people at the time were losing everything. According to his post, when HGTV asked him to come back, it was just as a special guest. They told him that they'd given his job to Jesse Tyler Ferguson, a change 
change that incited some serious self-doubt, confusion, and pain for Pennington. He captioned his post with these confessions, admitting that his, quote, ego took a huge punch. He then added that he eventually had a realization, saying, The job was never about me. It was about one lucky person being helped by an amazing team and making a difference in a community. Honestly, it was and always will be one of the best experiences I've ever had. Every single person involved is affected by the positive impact it has on the family. Eventually, Ty Pennington did return as a special guest, agreeing to be a part of an episode that aired in March 2020. He explained that coming back was akin to a family reunion for him, as most of the producers, carpentry people, and behind-the-scenes staff have remained the same. He traveled the country with them for 10 years, so as he pointed out when promoting the show, the bonds are very real. In the previously mentioned Instagram post, he elaborated about his decision to return, which apparently was a bittersweet one. He said, I have to say, watching someone else do my job really made me appreciate the incredible opportunity I was given back in the day, and how lucky I was that it came so naturally to me, and how much I love being part of an amazing team. Jesse Tyler Ferguson appreciated the olive branch of sorts. He told Us Weekly, "...knowing that he's such an accomplished carpenter and knowing that I'm not, I love that he's given me his blessing." Since Jesse Tyler Ferguson stepped into his host role, he's been doing a genuinely incredible job, making sure he connects with the families he meets off-screen as well as on. While the job of host is demanding and busy, Ferguson told The Wrap that he takes care to actually spend time with the people whose home renovations he's helming. In these more intimate, hours-long discussions, which, for timing purposes, simply can't make the final cut, he develops a deep understanding of the family's unique struggles. Then, after the taping wraps and the crew heads out, leaving the family with their brand-new renovation, Ferguson continues to keep up with them. He said after taping the first season, in, I follow them all on social media, and I keep in touch, and it's like they've become friends of mine. It's a reminder to me that I don't always have to worry about all the things that I've been worried about for the past 11 years. The majority of people are good people." The production company behind the reboot of Extreme Makeover Home Edition is called Endemol Shine. It produced the series, helping it land on HDTV. If the name sounds familiar to you, it's probably because you've seen it many times in the credits of a smattering of your other favorite shows. Yes, Endemol Shine is the powerhouse behind iconic hits on a wide variety of networks. Perhaps most recognizably, it produces the legendary TV staple Big Brother on CBS. But their empire goes far beyond just Big Brother and Extreme Makeover Home Edition. The company has produced Wipeout on TBS and LEGO Masters, MasterChef, and MasterChef Jr. on Fox. An apparent fan of reboots, they also helped launch the reboot of The Biggest Loser on USA Network. As anyone with even a slight handle on the entertainment industry knows, the coronavirus pandemic was less than ideal for television production. That's actually an understatement, as COVID-19 absolutely toppled the business, bringing almost all production to a forced halt for months on end. Luckily for Extreme Makeover Home Edition, they were one of the fortunate shows that reaped the benefits of both filming just in the nick of time before the pandemic began, and also airing largely during the early pandemic when everyone is beginning to quarantine. It turns out that people staying in their homes and having nothing to do bodes well for reality television viewership. According to the press of Atlantic City, the reboot began prepping in May of 2019, and filming began in August. Thankfully, they were able to piece together 10 episodes before the pandemic changed everything. While 10 episodes may not sound like a lot, the reboot of Extreme Makeover Home Edition went at lightning speed to film everything in just two months. The show turned their cameras on in August 2019 and, in an impressive hustle, the season wrapped by November, according to the press of Atlantic City. Filming more than one episode a week is nothing to shrug off. The show's production schedule was presumably made easier by their commitment to staying on the West Coast, at least for the first season of the reboot. Extreme Makeover Home Edition filmed between California and Utah, and the series was opened up to new kinds of people who might need a renovation, such as renters, and people planning on relocating. As Brady Connell, an executive producer on the show, explained to Daily News, "...if there is a family out there and they have a home that just doesn't work for them anymore and it just needs to be remodeled, that is something we're looking at doing. It doesn't have to be a knockdown." All around, with so much to coordinate in just a couple of months, we think the team behind the show is pretty impressive. Everyone wonders the same thing about reality TV. How much of this is actually real? When it comes to Extreme Makeover Home Edition, the most questionable part in particular has always been the surprise element at the top of the show. We've all had discussions about this, asking an equal amount's disbelief and awe if this family really had no idea an entire construction and camera crew was about to show up at their house and tear the whole thing down. After all, what if they had a party planned the next day? What if they had house guests? Turns out, we had nothing to question. While families don't officially know that they have been chosen for an extreme home makeover, they are told that they're in the running. As Pedro Harigi, a makeover recipient, explained to the Daily Bulletin, his family knew they were being considered. But it wasn't until Jesse Tyler Ferguson showed up at his door, crowd of volunteers in tow, that they knew they'd been chosen. Still, we wonder if they're given a heads up when the show's team is heading over. In the end, though, it doesn't matter. At the very least, we know for sure that the recipients' lives are changed for the better after the crew gets to work. It doesn't get more real than that. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon!
Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.